Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming to make yourself sure. comfortable. I'm going to probably have to, I don't have any problems. Come on in, Joe. Oh, okay. But I probably have to check with Brad because I want to find out if that violates any of the, I'm okay with that because I'm very transparent. An ADA accommodation, if Brad's going to suggest that well, I can't okay. have an ADA accommodation, that'd be violating my federal what rights. Is, I'm sorry, what is the, yeah, I know a lot about ADA, see so my I, crutches right I'm here. I'm sure you do, so you know that, that Brad, yeah, Brad certainly doesn't control ADA laws, and this is my ADA sure. advocate, and this is my DV advocate. Hi, hi good morning. And that would be I'm under Tim. Marcy's law. Nice to meet you. you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay. So, uh, you know, good. Good. We're a little early. Do you want I'm to get glad. started? No, no, no. I, yeah, I would. Okay. I'm okay. I Great. think I'm prepared. I, I went and looked at all the past material, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, you sort of knew what the purpose of this meeting was. That was we great. worked a little bit together on in uh, 14, year 14. And 15. Then we had the trial in 15. Mm -hmm. And then my job was to do a vocational assessment. I don't know if you ever got a chance to look at the report. I hope you did. No, I didn't get a copy of the report, and I, but I have your testimony for yeah. the transcript. Okay, all right. And, um, the, you know, I, I don't know how you felt about it, but actually, in retrospect, it was interesting because my earning capacity, I, mean, I don't know if I need to, you know, I'm a teacher at heart, so I like to explain things. So part of this whole issue is when we go through a divorce in California, uh, a judge has to look at the earning capacity for both spouses, the supporting spouse, which would be Mr. in this case, and the supported spouse. And, it, you know, it's for everybody. So it's just one parts of the California law that should be a no-fault divorce state, 50-50 state, and a support state. So what we did initially was we met with Susan. But no, just yeah, to clarify ahead, sure. for Scott, oh, sorry, sure. I need to make sure that my phone, my, sure. uh, it may go off a lot. I apologize. That just... Let me just tell them I'm in a meeting. If I knew you were coming with the camera, I might have put my two feet on We have a hat, extra hat. <laughs> no, I don't know. Scott, you got the FF hat? No, I, 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 I would like very much I for you, Mr. No, Harper, no, to wear an FF. In fact, I understand that yeah, you yeah, published you an article for the San Jose Mercury. You want to wear that? Well, I don't want to wear it, but I'll take it if you want to give it to me. I gave that to Scott. Scott, you have to wear that. 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 Scott, you have to so, uh, but but just to clarify, because Scott is kind of new to this process, uh -huh, sure. not everybody gets um, someone like Mr. Harper to examine their vocational skills. M my husband's paid him approximately fifty thousand dollars to. No, not even close. Well, how much has he paid you? Oh, I don't know off the top, but the, the original reports were about four thousand dollars, and then there would be court fees. So probably more like fourteen, maybe at the most, I think. Uh, I don't and then think there's a new a new round here, which could be another. But up to now, no, not even close to. 50. But obviously, not everybody can afford to yes, have well, their, their spouse assessed like that's that. True. So obviously, only people who have money and have Brad Baugh. You do a lot of cases with Brad Baugh. We I discussed some, that yes, before. Uh -huh. You've done the Cheriton case, and you told me that you had assessed Iris Cheriton, uh -huh. and she was an opera singer and yeah, um, a classic case. So, yeah. so, and that was good because I believe Iris Cheriton only was imputed thirty-eight thousand for. For the work, and she yeah, she her, was a piano her, a pianist sure. and piano her, lessons. Her husband and all that. had five hundred and forty-two million dollars, but it was important to <laughs> impute her for thirty-eight thousand. And I think you imputed Diana Dong for a hundred and fifty thousand. I've met Diana Dong, and she's actually only earning about thirty thousand right now, and she's on Medicaid. Well, let, so, let me just be clear though, it's just for because this is good having another person. I actually like that. I don't impute uh, anything. A judge imputes what I do is assess the situation mm -hmm. and to the best of my ability try to assess what a person could do the kind of jobs that are out there and what they could earn and that's what that's what i do a judge if it's felt that it's appropriate might impute down the road but generally imputation only occurs in a very small percentage of time because a lot of times people stipulate to numbers you know like mm -hmm. uh they'll stipulate to well because i'm pretty conservative in my Reports and in fact, in my earning capacity of Ms. Bassey, and I think we treated her with respect. Oh, I, I and all think that. you absolutely did. I think it came in I around fifty thousand. You yeah. said that I could earn money as a office assistant or something as a salesperson. Uh, yeah, different areas. Because you had a lot of, never, even though you never didn't mind have, that I had been in business with my husband for years and years. That I would be probably all I could do after this divorce would be an assistant. No, I had about 12, and I have the report here, I had about 12 uh, careers. Could I copy that? Because I don't No, I can't, I can't do that for protocol reasons, and I'll tell you why. But I can, uh, it's what my, my testimony was, but 
you know, I can kind of show it to you. But the reality is, no, if you say something that I don't believe is accurate, I'd take a minute to... Yeah, sure, but, no, I, I don't want to miss But I, I or you know, treated you with a lot of respect, and you were, see, there was a whole list of different careers. And it was can, hard, can I no, that, I really, I really can't, but they were things like, adver from advertising to marketing, communications, business development, sales, and blah, blah, blah. The difficulty was, of course, that Ms. Bassey was really very smart and in the agriculture industry mm -hmm. down in the Salinas area, which is a very unique and different kind of area, and been more of an entrepreneur. She did have that uh, magazine that you had for a while, you tried that, but primarily she hadn't worked in a, quote, traditional job for 20 years. So so that was that made it difficult, so we had to look at her transferable skills. But that's kind of the, the past. I went to and, court, and, and, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And let me kind of start sure. there, because sure. um, I, I think you need to have some understanding. Sure. In 2013, um, my husband remained operating two of our corporations that we built in a 20-year marriage. Okay. And I had been actively involved in those corporations, brought in the customers, mm -hmm. built the goodwill to the corporations, and um, they have had a court order banning me from speaking with CSP customers about CSP business. Right. And CSP business is producing seed for 90% um, of the Salinas Monterey vegetable market wow. for seed, lettuce seed grown in the Salinas Monterey area and also That's Yuma, huge. Arizona. Yeah. So when you're not allowed to speak about business to 90% of the clients, it restricts what you can do. Sure. I opened a seed lab with my partner. The idea That's was... That's what I wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. that. That's kind of after the court thing, uh, or right around that time, but sure. you opened a business, which was... I think that was the reason why, and this is good that we're jumping around a little, sure. and then we will go back, was that when we went to trial and when I reviewed your testimony, that you had said, because I had said 60 to 120 was kind of the range. Judges never take the high, so somewhere around there and then you had said hey I can make 150 sure. and then in two years I'll make 300 because you had this enterprise sure. you knew the seed business sure. you're very smart and you had this thing and that's evolving. what our businesses have generated for years and years because yeah. of the clients I brought to them yeah so my husband took all the money that the businesses generated and I essentially have a non-compete I'm essentially kicked out of my companies really? with uh, only a minimal amount of pay, and the gag order prevents me from talking to clients. So since that was put in place in 2013, I'm not allowed to speak about business of CSP, which is seed business in the industry. So in your new just, business? That's so what it is. Are you, are you, is that lab. business still alive? Um, that business is alive. That yeah. business, I have hired RSTs, which are registered seed technologists. Uh -huh. We got the lab operating. My business partner and I... Um, uh, invested a lot in equipment mm -hmm. and personnel, got them running. I What's his name again? I know Mark I was reviewing it. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And we got that business operating. Um, I We had some turnover with RSTs. They're a highly qualified demographic, mm -hmm. registered seed technologist. They're an aging demographic, and I had to spend a lot of effort to get a replacement RST. We couldn't operate our lab without mm -hmm. one. Um, my husband has continued to subpoena my business partner, have him called to testimony at numerous hearings, I believe five mm -hmm. now, and that has put a strain on my partnership, and I've been limited in my ability to work in the ag industry. So essentially, I've been excluded from the entire agricultural industry. Which is where your the, the, your biggest strength would be and where you For have... For five years, exactly. because of my husband's order, and he's okay. been allowed to take the money and the profits, which is now considered his separate business. So he's really engaged in torture. So your non-compete has really handicapped you sure to go has. ahead on this other business and make a living with your business partner. And now for five years, I've lost contacts, relationships that mm -hmm. I should have been having in that industry. And so it will be starting all over at the best as an admin type person in the industry if I could get it. And I've okay. lost five years of those relationships. Yeah, and that's really, that's, that, that's too bad. That's a, you know, that's, that's a shame, really. So with not a lot else I could do, I've obviously gone into publishing. And, well, that's um, what I want to ask you. Why don't sure. you let me do this? Let me let me do these because this will keep us on track. Sure. It'll be easy to follow as well because I gave it some thought yesterday, and then we can vary from the questions. So the first one was, you know, the purpose of the interview. We got started, and that's kind of to go. We we met. We went to court in fifteen. So now it's like, what has occurred since fifteen to today okay. in terms of your health, your work, continuing education, and you're kind of you explain that, which is good. So we'll get back to that. I want to make sure you understand the purpose. So that's that's that. And then 
and you remember my testimony. You, did, you already said that you didn't read the report, but my testimony. Did you feel it was fairly accurate? And I, I, I hope you felt that I treated you with respect because I always try to do that. that I, sort of thing. To be honest, yeah. you had your associate interview me Richard was numerous involved. times. Uh -huh. And you were asking me a lot of questions about my publishing business mm -hmm. and the financial aspects of the publishing business. Mm -hmm. And you were, I remember you called me one time and asked me if there would be a writing job available for someone you were looking for. Um, I'm aware that you've published um, articles in the San Jose Mercury, so you would know that writing doesn't pay a lot. I couldn't pay writers <laughs> a lot of money. Right. Um, advertising, it's advertising dependent. Right. And if you recall at the time, I was also pro per, and I was representing right. myself. And I recall asking you on the stand as a pro per how much time you thought I spent um, preparing for my divorce as a self-represented person. Yeah, and that's a job in itself. That's enormous. And you said 50 to 60 hours a week yeah, was so, your testimony. Okay, so at least that was a credible And, thing and we I talked did. about on the stand that right. while you made a report that I could go get all these jobs, the question to you was, did you think I could keep those jobs if I was having to represent myself in my divorce case? And you said no. That was your okay, testimony. Good. Yeah, well, I think that So I think sense. that was honest Legitimate. and that was Thank fair. You. Thank you. Um, I, since that time, Mr. Tennant returned to my case in late 2015. Okay. Um, Mr. Tennant has spent um, not only the time defending me without attorney's fees, I owe him a million dollars. Um, Mr. Baugh has been paid over a million dollars, and Bob Tennant has not been paid at all. Well, let me let me ask you a question. So where is the divorce now? You, you guys haven't, it's not finished? No, nope. we're going to final trial wow. in May. So and there's still issues, emotion. financial issues, sure. that all haven't been resolved. All oh, the financials. Okay. Oh, so if you can imagine, it's been six years. Um, yeah. Both my houses and my business properties have been sold. Mr. Baugh has gotten me sanctioned, um, as is, of course, with most every person mm -hmm. he is involved with. Mm -hmm. And um, I have no money, more debt, and I'm about to declare bankruptcy. On November 14th, I was assisting Mr. Largent in the courthouse in Santa Clara County, um, reviewing files, and there was an incident, and the Santa Clara County sheriffs broke my hand. And so, I now need surgery for my hand. That is my typing mechanism. Yeah. And Mr. Largent and I have both discussed that we have a number of PTSD issues related to family court. I have had 156 hearings opposing Mr. Baugh, um, and I have lost every single hearing. He has won every single hearing. Um, I have helped my lawyer for four consecutive weeks in preparing a probably 2,000 page document pressing criminal charges against Brad Baugh. And I've done the editing and the work for that. I'm not a very good editor. My um, associate, Stephen James, will attest to that I'm not a very good writer or an editor. And that's why publishers hire good writers and editors. Right, exactly. So my skills on that are a little limited. And without the money to be able to publish and pay writers and do things, I'm limited in my publishing Sure, absolutely. As well. yeah. Okay, that all makes sense. So, um, so the, we remember the testimony. Uh, and then... I think you already said that you felt it the earning capacity that I had projected at that time was fairly reasonable and there was a range. Yeah. Didn't have too much of a problem with that. I would say at that time that would have been reasonable, but the, right. now with a broken hand and Yeah, well, we're, that's where we're going. We're just talking the, about then. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's why we're doing this, to sort of update it. And then I had mentioned that later in August in court that you had said the 150 now and 300. That's because you had the, the business plan and you had Mr. Selvage and you were in the seed business, something you knew, and you were pretty optimistic about what you were going to be able to accomplish. And unfortunately, uh, with the uh, you know with the non-compete and other issues, that's uh, been a big handicap. Um, now let me ask you this: So is it? Could you again? If you don't remember, that's fine because some of this you could turn in later. Can you estimate what your earning have been like since? 2000 and let's say 16 and 17. I made about $2,500 on the last year, one month of 2016 from the Metro newspaper. Okay, so 2016 about 2500 From the Metro. Okay. And I had a consulting agreement with an agricultural client that terminated in December of 2017. Okay. That had gone through 2016. Would you make in 17, do you think? $2,500 a month as a consultant for... Okay, as a, as a, so a month, so that's about... With a loss of against my seed business so while I made the money in consulting my seed business lost money okay probably about attributed to me for my ownership probably I want to say a loss of about 
50,000 to 100,000. Well, so you've been a busy person. I mean, this is important because one of the things the judge looks at is, you know, what you've been doing. And any time somebody is improper, even if they're not improper, and they have a major case that has the volume, it's it's a job in itself because you have to do what lawyers call discovery. And and eventually, can. because of my limitations based on the court order, I wasn't able to assist my clients in the manner that I needed to, and so that ceased. Okay. In 2017, I started a media corporation called Ex Parte Media with a partner, Joe Sweeney, and we intend to do a multimedia um, publishing and production business. Oh, okay. All right. So that, that is still kind of on the table mm -hmm. and still bubbling at mm -hmm. some point when you kind of get unshackled and you get some idea of what your economic realities are. Then you unshackled might would be a very appropriate yeah, word. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. I understand that. Okay, so, all right, and then um, you were about half half the way on 18, so I imagine that's still the uh, media position. Are, are you, do you still have some plans, if you can get this not compete dropped, to go back with Mr. Selvage and... Uh, I think it will be very difficult to recover relationships having lost five years in an okay. industry. Well, you probably know that because you talked to It's not just yourself, a job, which, it's an industry. Yeah, it's an no, entire industry. I know it industry. pretty well down there. I, I've been involved. I did a lot of consulting in Salinas. So imagine Fresh if we weren't allowed to talk Fresh to 90% of those clients. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, I understand. Sure. Yeah. And it's a small world down there. They all talk. They all know sure, each other. Sure, so. of course. And if you're not around and you're not in those conversations, you're out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be a problem. Okay, all right. Um... Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm asking these, but I think you, we've already covered some of them. Did you start a business with Mervyn Selvage called CDEX? Yes. I think you said you did, and it's still alive, but... It's probably going to... It's now reduced. We lost another RST, and <coughs> we're probably going to close the business <coughs> Excuse operation. Me. Mm -hmm. And sell, or I'll sell my interest for a loss. Okay, all right. So right now it's kind of not, not anything value that you have. Um, and ex parte hasn't generated what, any income yet. What what was your um, what was your uh, your duties back then? Your job title and duties um, at uh, the uh, CDEX? Marketing and sales. Oh, okay. Which is something you you know and about. CFO. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you ever, you never got a draw or whatever, it was all going to be based on what you earned and then at some point you pull some money when you and, got a straight And we going. had to basically use our own money to fund a lot of the expenses. Okay. Where, where you, and this would be helpful too, looking at how you divide your time, I mean, you're very entrepreneurial and uh, you've got the court activity and you said the 165 court dates and all the preparation and all those. 156. 150, well, okay, it was close. But anyway, uh, you've been pretty involved. So your average day in would be like what? What would you what would you say? Um, well, today uh, <laughs> went, you to got a, court related. went to a court protest and photographed it for the last two hours. Uh -huh. Now I'm a court ordered to be here. Okay. In the afternoon, I'll do some editing and production with my associates, and okay. then I will be finishing is the editing and production. Is that with the ex parte? Uh, yes. And, and, and what is Stephen your James is my associate. Okay. Huh? And what, oh, okay. And what is your concept there? What do you hope to? Who's your market, and what do you hope to do? Um, well, we hope to be covering family court issues ah, in the state okay. of California. Right. Okay. And we um, we have been to. I have formal training um, last summer. Um, Mr. James and I attended the society. No, that wasn't. That was investigative reporters and editors, uh -huh. and um, learned interviewing skills, investigative skills, and things that my magazine had not previously mm -hmm. done. And we attend symposiums. I brought some of the receipts from that, if you wanted to see that. Last weekend, I attended a symposium all day on a Saturday. Most mm -hmm. of my training in mm -hmm. that area happens on weekends and in my free time. And then I usually work in the evenings until um, as late as 1 or 2 in the morning, interviewing people and responding to emails. Would this be mostly a uh, California um, yes. type business? So. Yes. <coughs> and do you see it as something, how would the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the business model. How would you get revenue from the services and the information you're providing? Publishing um, <coughs> revenue Excuse has me. shifted significantly from traditional ad sales yeah. over to donors, and so publishing content that readers want and that donors are interested in 
would be something we would be working to fund the, the um, publication and the production company. So there would be uh, <clears throat> there would be various sources of I mean income, and there might be like you say donors or people that believe that it's a they work through a non good non nonprofits. Yeah. Um, if you know Steve Jobs's widow has recently started a number of endeavors to promote journalism and to import good. And so we believe strongly, and I'm one that believes also okay. in supporting writers, investigative reporters, and that that's a critical part of our democracy, and mm -hmm. I intend to spend my time doing that. Good for you. And you have, uh, oh, we're going to be some water, I'm choking. Right here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have Mr. Zuckerberg uh, testifying in front of Congress today, so there's a lot, yeah. going to be a lot going on about, and, you know, and, different and models. And people are going to find out, you know, he got to do his model and he had a lot of money to do it with, and now the American people are pretty upset that they've been being spied on and it, elections interfered with it. So yeah. there will be shifts in how things are covered, and I think investigative <coughs> reporting is very important to you, be able to expose that. So. Well, that's good. So you have a, you, you've been an entrepreneur most of your life, so you're, you've been involved with entrepreneurial in the seed different seed enterprises. You had the business with Mr. Selvage, your hands were tied there because of the non-compete, plus being so involved in running your own divorce, Correct. plus then starting the ex parte, being involved in activities and things that are starting to <coughs> give that a, give that some legs, if you will, and sure. that sort of thing. All right. And <coughs> one more thing that you should know that is a little bit of a burden to my publishing business is Mr. Baugh and Mr. Bassey had me declared vexatious in 2016. I remember that. So after representing myself, I was declared vexatious. So what does that actually mean? That I mean, I know what the word means, but what does it mean in terms of how you're treated? And it all means that? that you don't have access to the courts. You must have a lawyer file a court um, lawsuit. And in publishing, public records requests are very important. And public agencies don't usually comply as they should. Yeah. And being declared vexatious in publishing also impairs my ability to operate that business because most small publishing businesses can file writs or lawsuits for agencies that aren't complying yeah. with records requests, and I don't have the ability to do that. So that puts an, an incredible burden on my partners and limits me in the publishing business. And how old are you now? I'm Susan? 53. Okay, 53. Boy, you can almost go to law school with all the knowledge you have and stuff. You have family law, uh, you know, public policy type Probably person. Probably Mr. Bassey would have been better served investing in me going to law school and being able to be a lawyer. Well, you'd have been natural at that. You'd be great at it, I'm sure. So, all right. Okay, so the CFO at CEDEX, you already mentioned that. And then at one time, did you own 10% of that business? And what is your current ownership? You've already... Of CEDEX? Yeah, you've already said that it's kind of not on anything so I believe 10 or 20 percent of I nothing gave, is nothing right I when we invested in it my children um, had percentages and I think my percentage was about 25 percent okay total. all right okay and 25 percent of the loss is now mine so I think going back now this is really going back in your life uh, and through about 90 and 96 when you worked in that w2 uh, position you were I think with Lanier and then you're with another American uh, Cyanamid. Cyanamid, and then uh, Agricoat. Yes. Did you ever, do you remember what the ceiling or what your range, kind of what your earning, earnings Agricote were around there? Agricoat was a community-owned business. Okay. And my husband was in charge of it, and uh. he decided how I was going to be paid, and it was usually paid as consulting income or to our other business, CSP. Okay. Do you know what that amounted to, roughly? I don't recall. Okay. He would have those records. Okay. And then what I've about Lanier them. and when you were kind of a... I mean, I you believe, were a hot shot when you got right out of school. I believe Lanier in 1986 was eighteen thousand dollars a year. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. How's your health? Um, I have a broken hand that needs to be surgically repaired, and okay. I understand I'll be out for six um, weeks. Okay. Um, I am suffering from some symptoms related to PTSD, related to family court issues. Well, so on the hand thing, is that the, uh, there was an incident with the sheriff at the, uh, so that's going to be a lawsuit too, so you, I would imagine you're going to be tied up in another lawsuit trying to get some justice and compensation. I have a civil rights that. lawsuit yeah, yeah. pending yeah. that will be filed against the Santa Clara County Sheriff. So the future is even when you get this family law thing settled and you kind of, you know, take a look at, well, okay, here's what my economic realities are. You're still then going to be, you know, st starting your the, the ex parte business, and then you're going to be involved in another lawsuit, which mm -hmm. is going to be very time consuming. So you'll be busy then. Mm -hmm. That's a fair, fair to say. Okay. 
Um, I would prefer not to be involved in the legal system anymore. Oh, I'm sure. I wasn't, yeah, ever, I, I wasn't involved in it in my entire yeah. life until my husband filed for divorce. I bet, yeah. No, I, I realize that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Did you know Diana Dong was also declared vexatious? No, I don't know. I just wondered. Because no, yeah. you said you didn't weren't really familiar with what that meant. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I know what vexatious means. But I don't know what it actually translates to. I know it means when a person's a vexatious client, they're bad news to the court or whatever. But that's a general kind of interpretation. I don't know specifically what that limits somebody to or whatever. So that's what I was kind of asking you. Well, and, and I think that's probably important for you to know how it relates to my publishing business, how it relates uh -huh. to Diana Dong. Um, I know that she's had a couple of incidences where say a landlord or a tenant or something where she, a car accident where she might want to be able to sue somebody and not be able to afford a lawyer she's not allowed to do that without first oh permission I see so the there's courts. some real specific uh, specific limitations yes. once you've got that formal it's a formal kind of a uh, finding from a judge sure and then that has some specific so for example if you have another court uh, case you have to have you can't represent yourself you have to have representation that's right which okay. means you have to have the lawyer to money to be able yeah, to retain yeah, the lawyer yeah yeah okay all right and uh, I'm gonna have to have the money to retain a lawyer for public records that people aren't giving me yeah. and it's really a problem yeah, yeah. it puts wow. an economic burden on my publishing business okay so as far as you and I communicate and first of all you're very articulate and I appreciate you're very clear very responsive to the questions I have. If after this, if I think of anything, I'll just email you that's, something. That's, and if you feel appropriate, then you can respond or whatever. Sure. But I think I have enough general information to okay. know what you've been doing since 15. And, okay. And well, and that, I appreciate so. you letting them yeah. be here. Yeah, it makes me yeah, better. Absolutely. And I'm sure you know, like with crutches, some of us need <laughs> oh, yeah, I might. <laughs> yeah, because I got a real bad hip, so and I've had some health, so I'm hobbling around all the time. So I've always been an empathic person anyway, but. Now I really am knowing, you know, how hard it is to move around and, and what you need to do. So, all right. Well, okay. I, I want to thank you for right. coming thank in. thank you. And, and I wish you the best of luck, too. Thank you. All right. Well, it's nice meeting you. Oh, it's nice thank meeting you, you too. Thank right. You, you take care. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Let me just shake your hand. Just like I'm going to use it. You're going to be Scott Lardent. Uh, Scott Lardent. Okay. L-A-R-G-E-N-T. And you're the uh, ADD. So, they're very much tied to but even so, that's what I'm scheduling with. And then the other gentleman was Stephen James. So business associates in the next part And we work on a non-profit things. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Thank you too. Thank you, ma'am.